everybody, welcome to Straight Talk. My guest today is Teresa Baker, founder of the CEO Diversity Pledge. I first got to know Teresa, we first got to know each other when she was first launching the pledge. Teresa, that was how many years ago now? Two years ago, June. Almost exactly, yeah, almost exactly. Right. Great, well, I really appreciate you making the time to talk with me today. I know it's been very busy for you and it's early out there. So thank you very much for, for making time for me. Thank you, I appreciate this opportunity. Well, one of the things that I wanna talk about is the CEO Diversity Pledge, because even though you launched it two years ago, it's certainly now today more relevant than ever. I think that's right. safe to say. Right. Um, so let's back up to the beginning of, of the pledge. Um, can you talk a little bit about your inspiration for it? I was just noticing lack of diversity and inclusion, specifically around communities of color in the outdoor industry. So I thought, what can I do? What can I do to make our voice voices more relevant to the industry? So I reached out to a guy named Chris Perkins and said, hey, Chris, I have an idea for a, a diversity pledge. And Chris said, tell me more. And we talked and started putting in the efforts to, to get it going. So it's it's an opportunity for outdoor brands and now nonprofits to commit to the work of diversity and inclusion within the outdoor industry at large. When the pledge first launched, I was like, we'll be lucky if five brands sign on. Um, Chris and I had no idea it would explode to what it has. Um, initially, it was and still is Chris and I being the guiding force of the pledge. And then we had a 25 member steering committee. And the purpose of the steering committee is to um, pair them with the brands that signed on. So that's still an element of the pledge, but it was housed on Diversify Outdoors website so that we wouldn't have to create a, a whole nother website to house it. Even before, all of this craziness took place, we had decided to move the pledge because we wanted to add more elements like a job board. And we wanted to extend the steering committee to welcome in underrepresented communities across the board. So having its own website now, which is the In Solidarity Project, it allows us to now have a job board and Geez, over a hundred steering committee members, as well as activists. Yeah, that's amazing. And that growth is such a nice problem to have, right? Uh, yes, we've actually had to pause accepting applications because it's, it's again, it's just Chris and I. So we are trying to keep yeah. up and we're yeah. engaging some of the steering committee members now to help us with all the applications that have come in. Teresa, how does your pledge differ from Camber's CEO Outdoor Equity Pledge? And should companies that sign one sign the other and vice versa? Should companies be signing both if this work is really important to them? I felt it necessary not to just have people sign a document saying, yeah, we'll, we'll do the work. That's simple. That's easy. But actually holding them accountable to the four pillars of the pledge and throughout the year, they report back on that progress under those four pillars. Um, Camber has since expressed to me that they are no longer promoting their equity pledge, that they are diverting people to, to our pledge. So I can't say if people should sign both. What I can say is that if you are committed to the work of diversity and inclusion beyond just signing, a pledge, then you have to hold yourself accountable. And right. that's what our pledge asks is that you put action behind your commitment. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's great to know that they've been diverting to your pledge. I think, you know, for me personally, and I think a lot of people were kind of a little bit confused about the two. And, um, and it's so great that, you know, that you've been able to come together and work together and build up your, your pledge too into this robust platform. Can you talk about the four pillars a little bit so people understand if they sign what they're, yes. what they're signing on for? 
for me, the most important is outward facing. So brands and nonprofits are committing to being more diverse in their marketing strategies and in their online campaigns, showing a more diverse uh, representation of people in the outdoors. So that to me is the most important. But then there's also a commitment to hiring and um, having people of color represented on boards. And then there's the element of working together. I think that says a lot. You know, all these brands coming together, I lost count of how many climbing gyms have signed on. So it would be good to pull them all together so that they can commit to working together on the pledge. And the other is just sharing information about the pledge. You know, their commitment to the pledge and everyone who has stepped up to sign, you know, having greater representation on leader in leadership roles within companies and on boards. That's to, that's to me should be automatic, but it isn't happening often enough. So the pledge encourages people to take more steps towards that. That makes, that makes great sense. Um, who can sign the pledge? If you're not a CEO, can you take your diversity pledge? Can, um, and, you know, are there, are there, I guess, are there plans or, or current practices to open it up beyond the C-level? Because I think when you see CEO, you might say, oh, I'm not a CEO, I'm a brand manager or a brand leader. Can I sign it? The commitment that we're asking is from the CEO, the founder of, of brands. That is the commitment we're asking for. But we are in communications with brand managers and whatnot. We're not asking the CEO to be part of every element, but we are asking them to be aware that their company has signed this pledge and that their name is attached to it. Beyond that, we are working with various departments throughout the nonprofit or brands to get this work done. But we want to make sure that the CEO is on board with the commitment his company, his or her company is making. Yeah. And then that adds a whole layer of accountability to it too, right? Okay. I, know, I know the last few weeks have been exhausting for you. Um, aside from that, what, what have, what, what has this, you know, this current crisis and climate been like for you personally? Yeah. It's been really busy over the past three months, actually. I've had a lot of brands reach out to me and ask, what can we do at this moment to keep our audience engaged? So I was already involved in a lot of conversations with brands around that. Um, and then of course, um, the incident with Mr. Floyd took place and incidents before that took place. And then everything was just in an uproar. So it's been super busy, um, which is part of the reason Chris and I have decided to pause new applications so that we can get caught up and get people on the right path of implementing the pledge. We want to make sure people understand that beyond signing the pledge, that's the easy part. Right. Now comes the hard part of putting a plan into action. What I try to get people to understand is that the pledge isn't the only avenue. The pledge is just one piece that yeah, can help yeah. people do this work. There are DEI agents, and when I say DEI, it's diversity, equity, and inclusion. And for some people, they add the justice piece, which is relevant as well. But there are a lot of us across this country doing this work. So the pledge is just one piece to help people. And I, I think the fact that we now have the In Solidarity website, there are so many elements there that can help people move forward. Because all too often, people tell us we're stuck. We don't know what to do. We right. don't know where to begin. How can we find a more diverse uh, pool of candidates for our current job opening? Well, that's all there now. So yeah. that's one obstacle that we've removed so that people can have a place to go and learn about the amazing individuals across the country who are doing this work. So by no means are we saying sign the pledge, no. If you're not committed to doing the work, do not sign the pledge because we will hold you accountable. 
we do not practice the call out culture. We practice the call in culture. So if there's something happening um, and we feel we need to step in, we do it privately, not publicly. At no point will we say anything harsh about any of the brands publicly. So we, we've made that commitment to help them and not hinder them. Yeah, I love it. I love it. What's the what's the goal? Like, you, you know, you, you've, you've kind of capped it or paused it right now at 100 so you can catch up. Is there like a, a dream number in your head or like what's the end? Like, I don't even know how many companies there are in the outdoor industry, to be honest, but a lot more than 100. I can tell oh you that. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've gotten so many responses. Chris just sent me a message this morning. 60,000, 60,000 hits in two weeks. That's ridiculous. That's and amazing. we've had we've had hundreds of people wanting to submit applications. So right now we have 101. Chris is working on uploading another 100. That's how busy it's been. But certainly my goal is not to have thousands of brands sign on. I yeah. think I'd be comfortable at about 250. Mm -hmm. at the most, yeah. because it's not about, you know, signing every brand out there. Yeah. It's about maintaining the relationships with the brands who have signed and making sure they have everything they need to be successful. Right. Can you talk about any brands that have really committed to this from the beginning of, of the pledge and, and what kind of progress and evolution they've seen? Any 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 brands that you'd like to sort of celebrate and 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 call out for being for doing great work? I want to acknowledge them all for being brave enough to take the step. I know this isn't easy. And when you make that commitment, that commitment is now public. So the public is watching you, what you do. But of course, there are brands out there that are just doing amazing work. Always Merrill. Merrill has exceeded our expectations of what a brand can do. Um, Hoka has stepped up and they're doing amazing work. And my friends over at Granite Gear, how awesome is Rob? That I, I love Rob. I love the commitment that they're making. And then again, um, the Outbound Collective, they have put out four films now speaking to lack of diversity in the outdoor spaces along with Wonder Camp. So there, there are people stepping up doing this work. And then you have Q, James Q, Martin, that's stepping up. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with the commitment that people have made. And as time goes by, more and more people are doing more work to um, showcase not just the pledge, but their commitment to moving this industry forward. Right. Um, well, that's a great segue into, um, into this next question, which, you know, I'd love for you to share a few minutes of advice with me on how I can do a better job with the platforms that I have with Snooze and The Voice. I think the most powerful thing this industry can do is use its voice, period. Um, Journalists have so much power. Editors have so much power to get out to the public a positive message or a negative message. And I think for publications, now is your time to shine. You need to continue beyond this moment, but into the future, getting out the importance of this industry, period, pushing forward a more diverse community. Because what a lot of people fail to understand about me and my work, I wanted to do this work because I didn't see enough faces that look like mine around the table of environmental protection. And that is my ultimate goal, is to engage more people in that fight. And I think the more people that see us and understand we too care about these outdoor spaces, the more people we have in place fighting for the protection of them. So continuing to push out the message of underrepresented communities is something that you as a, as a journalist, and that's 
No, I don't. I don't mean to offend you if you don't describe yourself as such. But uh, that's fine. I think I, I think that's important to stay the course. You know, don't let this moment die down, and then your commitment to it dies down as well. So stay the course. This is a long journey ahead. In five years, I'm doing away with the pledge. I don't want the pledge to be in place. I want people to all to automatically be doing this work and the pledge not be needed. So that is my hope moving forward for the pledge. And, and I just want everybody to understand the power that they have as individuals. All too often we think, oh, I'm just one person. I can't make a difference. This pledge is crazy. And we have some major multi-million dollar companies that have committed to that. And this was an idea from one person. And I didn't allow the fact that I was one individual to stop me. And if anyone knows me, I will say anything. I, I don't hold back. And I think all too often people think they have to, you know, walk the straight and narrow in order to make a difference. I screw up every day. I say stuff I shouldn't say. But I keep trying to, to, to become a better person at this work because I understand now that I speak to a larger audience because of all the people that these brands bring on. So. You know, people have to knock me upside the head a couple of times every now and then and say, oh, well, you shouldn't have said that. Or and I'm like, damn it, you're right. So I'm trying to become better at this myself. We do not have all the answers. We are trying as well. So for people that come to us and they're like, well, our plan is going to be based off everything you say. That can't work. You too have the answers. And as a collective, We'll put this piece together and kick ass moving forward. But we all play a role, no matter how small of a role you feel you play, you play a role. And all those roles coming together is what's going to make the outdoor industry um, a better industry. That's awesome, Teresa. I, I want to thank you so much for, um, for shedding so much light on, on this topic really challenging the industry to come together, not letting people get off easy. I wanna thank you for your passion around this and your grace and your willingness to, um, to put in this work and bring more people into this. I really, really appreciate it. I've learned a lot from talking with you. Yeah, one thing that I need to definitely get out to people is because we've had so many people reach out saying we wanna donate and that's awesome. We need the money, but we are not set up as a nonprofit or an LLC. And we are in the process of finding out which is the best path to take for that. But we are, we are just two individuals trying to make a difference. So thank you. I appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome, Teresa. Have a great week. Thanks, you too. And thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Straight Talk. You can find more episodes of Straight Talk on snoozenet.com. Check us out there. <laughs>